My name is Brad Allner. And how long have you been a member of the Disability and Human Rights Group, Brad? Pretty well since its inception in 2007 or 8. And, and what's your favorite thing about being a member of the Disability and Human Rights Group? There really have been some classic discussions that you get from looking at the perspective of people with disabilities. That's a perspective you just don't often get. You get a lot of discussions with general people who think they know lots of things, which they do, but I don't know. I mean, you can talk about building codes with developers and builders and all sorts of things, but unless you're talking about access issues from people who need to access stuff, you're going to miss something. And it, it really does uh, fill in a gap for me that has some of those those additional discussions because otherwise that people perspective you're just going to miss. Not because you say to yourself, oh I'm going to make sure I miss certain people. That's not the intent. But um, unless you are really intentional about your inclusion, you're going to miss something and that's I think the story. What do you think is that importance of that sort of lived experience within advocacy? Well, I think you've just got to see that as, as an asset. Otherwise, you're going to look at fancy degrees and, and, and knowledge of a, of a certain sort that, again, you're just going to, going to miss out on things. I, I have lots of education myself, and so I'm not anti-education, but if you just take it from the perspective of somebody who calls themselves an expert in something, again, you're, you're going to miss something. Where is it, if what you're ready to do is simply ask, what's your experience, and, and have some notion of doing something with the answer you receive, you're, you're going to get something that most people do miss out on. So you're seeing, like, we do see a lot of this, like, where lived experience doesn't play a role. Yeah. Like, in, with the people who make decisions for you. Why yeah. do you think that is? Well, actually, a lot of it I don't think is intentional. I just think they, they forget. They want to check boxes. And the boxes they check are with um, people who they think know things. And, and these aren't stupid people. They just have, in their lived experience, not had these lived <laughs> experiences. So, again, you're probably a, a university-educated <laughs> sort of person that sends you on a particular track of a way of thinking, oh, I've got this issue covered because I've, I've covered A, B, and C, and my perspective doesn't allow me to see, well, what about X, Y, and Z, and <laughs> all the points in between, and yeah, no, you've really got to got to be intentional about, about including as many perspectives as possible. And in fact, when you are, you realize, then again, you're, you're going to leave some out. Because if you've got access for 100 people, person 101 will have some need that you're, you're not going to get. So, so the point of a lot of access sort of issues is to try and make it as accessible for as many people as possible. That does have a limit. And... No world is perfect for anybody, but the point is not making, oh, I've got to make sure that I get in here. No, no, it is as, as broadly based as possible. Can I get uh, people in wheelchairs here? If, if my scooter is a big, wide, crazy looking thing, do I get on this lift? Um, if I'm blind, if I'm any number of given experiences, but it's not necessarily, oh, just let, make sure, let, let me make sure I get in here so that, <laughs> that I'm fine, but other people come up short. No, that's not the way. It's 
trying to make it as accessible as possible for for everybody, understanding that that is going to leave something out eventually, but you have <laughs> tried your darndest to include as many as you can because that's your perspective at the outset. If, on the other hand, you just say to yourself, well, I've got A, B, and C covered, thanks very much, that's my try at inclusion, um, <laughs> no. So, I might be someone who sees this video, yes. and I might be, or I might know someone living with a disability. Yes. What would joining this group maybe do for me? Well, again, we, we just try to be as inclusive as possible and probably fail at that as much too. But what you're, what you're bringing is, is your own perspectives on, on things and probably want to wanna, wanna stretch a bit of that from you, but want to, want to include your experience in, in our discussions as well. So, so yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming, but then be prepared as well to um, uh, uh, fold in the experience of others to your to your general experience. And if you were to bring a new member into the group, how would you make them feel welcome? Do you think? Well, I we've always had a phrase that. I lost a bit of its meaning, but we used to talk about pace being important so that it didn't matter if you showed up at one o'clock for a one o'clock meeting or if you needed to leave, you could, or those sorts of, of things. You, you, ha you have to go through things slowly enough so that people get it and they can kind of make their own um, ruminations and conclusions and share from their own perspectives on, on, on one hand. And and sometimes that <laughs> that is frustrating for people, but it's it it's hard work to be inclusive when when you're that's what your group is supposed to be. You can't sort of okay, we're we're our group and we've done and we've included these folks and then forget that there are other folks from outside that are gonna once again stretch your experience of what inclusion could be. So Every meeting is a little bit different. Um, I don't know. I have heard that sort of experience, sort of explained as kind of translation at the United Nations or something. Everybody is speaking a different language, but yet you're coming together. Um, that's one analogy I've heard that's always been, been a bit fun. Um, and if you were to pick one moment as sort of like your lasting memory of this group since you've been a member, what would that be? What would that be? Oh, I'm not sure, but again, it's it's being able to to discuss things and 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 when you bring things up, pe people get it because they don't have the same experience, but they'll have a similar experience of 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 somebody. And um, it's just just a a relatively safe context in which to um, mention things. Oh yeah, by the way, most people have forgotten A or B or C, but you know that that's really annoying when that happens, and somebody else will nod their head or raise their hand and. That's the real context of what happened. And the last question, what's something I might be surprised to hear about this group? What's something you might be surprised to hear about a group? We've had a lot of ups and downs in terms of our, our membership. Have had large groups along the way and... Uh, um, Sometimes people don't feel as included, so they don't attend quite as as frequently. But uh, no, we're always glad that uh, we get the people that we do, 
sometimes that's been a been a, a, a smaller number, but the uh, the goal has always been to attempt to uh, include more folks all the time.